Welcome to the day nine video, which is to solve quadratic equations by factoring. Yesterday, you reviewed factoring. Today, we're going to put that factoring to good use by solving. So far, we've solved quadratic equations by graphing. Today, we are going to be adding on another solving method, which is factoring. Factoring is used when you cannot use a calculator. So today, no calculator. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the zero product property. If you have two numbers, a and b, and their product is zero, so that means if I multiply them, I get zero, what can be said about the two numbers? Well, that means that either a is zero or b is zero. So looking at example number one, I have two factors, we can call them a or b, and when I multiply them, I get zero. That tells me that x minus 3 equals zero or x plus 5 equals zero. If I add 3, I get x equals 3, or if I subtract 5, x equals negative 5. So in this case, I have two solutions, 3 and negative 5. If I substitute either of those values in, I will get 0. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be factoring and setting our parts equal to 0. So looking at this first example, 35x squared minus 15x equals 0. We are going to solve this quadratic equation by factoring. First thing that I want to remind you is any time that you're solving a quadratic, it needs to be set equal to zero first, which is good. I have my equation set equal to zero. We're going to solve by factoring, so I just want to review our different factoring options. So first we have the GCF. We have the difference of perfect squares. We have product sum. So product sum is like x squared plus bx plus c. And then we have split the middle. Yes, split the middle is long. And yes, you are going to have some split the middle examples. So looking at our first example, the 35x squared minus 15x equals 0. Starting out, is there a GCF? Well, between 35 and 15, I can take out a 5. Between x squared and x, I can factor out an x. This leaves me with 7x minus 3 equals 0. Now that I have my two parts, by the zero product property, I can set them both equal to 0. So I get 5x equals 0 and 7x minus 3 equals 0. Dividing by 5, I get x equals 0. If I add 3, I get 7x equals 3 and x equals 3 over 7. So my solution set in this case includes 0 and 3 over 7. So if I substitute either one of those numbers into my original equation, I'm going to end up with 0. Now this second example is yours to do, the one with the stop sign. I would like you to pause the video and try this example on your own, please. Remember that I would like you to solve by factoring. Pause the video and come back when you are done, please. Let's see how we did. Now to solve by factoring, you should have subtracted 36. So I get x squared minus 36 equals 0. Now this is a difference of perfect squares. x squared is x times x. 36 is 6 times 6. 1 is positive and 1 is negative, And then I set equal to 0. You get x plus 6 equals 0 and x minus 6 equals 0. Subtracting 6, I get x equals negative 6. And adding 6, I get x equals positive 6. In this case, my answers are positive 6 and negative 6. Hopefully you got that one right. Now some of you may be asking, well, why can't I just take the square root at the beginning? You can take a square root, but you need to be careful. If you take a square root here, you need to remember that you end up with a positive and a negative answer. So the answer of 6 is wrong. It's positive 6 and negative 6. So if you happen to do that and remember to get the positive and the negative, then that's good. If not, you should be factoring. Okay, so let's move on to the next two. Looking at the example on the left, this is a product sum example. I'm looking for two numbers whose product 
is 32 and whose sum is negative 12. That adds to negative 12. Hopefully you know that that's negative 8 and negative 4. So I get x minus 8, x minus 4 equals 0. Now I set both equal to 0 and solve. If I add 8, I get x equals 8. Adding 4, I get x equals 4. So my solution set is 4 and positive 8. Now this example on the right at the stop sign is yours to do. I'm going to start you out by subtracting that 1. So you get 4x squared plus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And now you are ready to factor. There's no GCF, and you have a positive 4x squared, which means you're going to have to split the middle. So pause the video right now, try this one on your own, please, and come back when you are finished. Okay, let's see how you did. I'm not going to show you any of the work for splitting the middle, but I will show you what you should have gotten when you factored. When you factored, you should have gotten 4x minus 1 and x plus 1 equals 0. Setting both equal to 0, this gives you x equals 1 fourth and x equals negative 1. If you didn't get that, you made a mistake somewhere in your factoring, so go back and find that mistake. If you got that, good job and move on, please. Okay, now we're going to try out a word problem. It says, given a rectangle with an area of 96 feet squared, the length is x plus 2 and the width is x minus 2. Find the dimensions. Before we even try to write an equation, we need to draw a figure. So we have a rectangle that has an area of 96. The length is x plus 2 and the width is x minus 2. We need to find the dimension, so really we need to find x. Now you guys probably could just guess numbers until you got to 96. That's not what I want though. I want you to actually set up an equation and to solve it. Now area is length times width, so I'm going to get x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 96. Okay, let's multiply out that left side. I multiply using the box. Some of you multiply by foiling, either way is fine. So x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, negative 2x, and negative 4. I notice those cancel. So I have x squared minus 4 equals 96. If I subtract 96, I get x squared minus 100 equals 0. Now I'm ready to factor. There's no GCF, but I will notice that x squared and 100 are perfect squares. So this gives me x and x. 100 is 10 times 10. I get 1 positive and 1 negative. If I set both equal to 0, so x plus 10 equals 0 and x minus 10 equals 0. This gives me x equals negative 10 and x equals positive 10. Now, if x equals negative 10, that's going to give me negative sides. That doesn't make sense, so I ignore that one x equals 10 is what I'm going to use. 10 add 2 gives me a side of 12. 10 minus 2 gives me a side of 8. And these are both in terms of feet because that's the units we were given in the problem. So when you see a word problem like this, you are not to use guess and check. You are to set up an equation and solve it. We have one more problem that we are going to do together and then you're going to do one on your own. So writing equations, it says write a quadratic equation in standard form with 2 and 5 as its roots. Let's look back at the problem previously. We had x plus 10 and x minus 10. x plus 10 gave us a root of negative 10. x minus 10 gave us a root of positive 10. So it always gives the opposite sign. So if I want positive 2 to be my root, that's going to come from x minus 2. If I want positive 5 to come as my root, that's going to come from x minus 5. So these are my two roots, and I set them equal to 0. Now remember, if this was my factored form, I would do x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, which gives me x equals 2 and x equals 5, which is what I want. So this is my equation, but it has to be in standard form. 
This is factored form. Standard form is when you multiply it out. So we need to actually multiply out. Again, if you want to FOIL, that's fine. I like to use the box. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. This is negative 5x, and this is positive 10. So I get x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals 0. So this is my quadratic in standard form. Okay, you have one more to do on your own. This is for you to do. Pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Come back when you are finished. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have gotten x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. If you didn't, then you made a mistake somewhere. You need to make sure that you have all of the work and the correct answer when you come to class tomorrow. Before we end this video, quick piece of trivia. The image to the right is the Chicago, well, I guess it's really the image to the left. The image to the left is the Chicago flag. What do the four stars represent? Well, I think this is pretty interesting. The four flags, or the four stars, represent Fort Dearborn, the Great Chicago Fire, the Columbian Exposition, and the Century of Progress. The blue stripes represent the Chicago River and the Great Canal. And then the white stripes, there's actually three of them because there's white above and below, represent the North, West, and South neighborhoods. So, fun fact, when you come to class tomorrow, we're going to be checking your notes. Please bring any questions that you have.